Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to look at functions and equations. If you haven't already checked out these two videos on composite functions and inverse functions, I'd recommend you do so before watching this video. I'll put links to both of those in the video's description. Let's take a function, f of x equals 2x plus 7, and we're going to solve three different equations using this function. So the first equation is f of x equals 17. Now since we know that f of x is 2x plus 7, we can leave the right hand side as 17, but on the left hand side replace the f of x with 2x plus 7, like this. We now just have an equation to solve. This one's quite straightforward, we subtract 7 from both sides. On the left this leaves us with 2x, and on the right 17 takes 7 is 10, and then we divide both sides by 2 to give you x equals 5. Now this second equation is a little bit different. It doesn't say f of x equals, it says f of 3x equals. So we'll still leave the right hand side alone, that's 31. And for the left hand side we're going to start with f of x, so that's 2x plus 7, but we've been asked for f of 3x instead. This means the input here is 3x rather than x, so all we need to do is replace all of the x's in our function with 3x instead. So let's remove that x and change it for a 3x, like this. So the left hand side is now f of 3x rather than f of x. Let's just solve this equation. We need to multiply this bracket first, so 2 lots of 3x is 6x, and then plus 7 equals 31. We can now take 7 from both sides. On the left this gives you 6x, and on the right 31 takes 7 is 24. You can now divide both sides by 6, and this leaves you with x equals 4. It's a similar idea with this final equation. So the right hand side equals 27, and on the left hand side we'll start with f of x, which is 2x plus 7, but we're going to replace all of the x's with this new input here of x minus 4. So let's remove that x, and in its place we'll put an x minus 4. And now we can just solve the equation again. So if we multiply out the bracket first we've got two lots of x, so that's 2x, and two lots of negative 4, that's negative 8, and then plus 7 equals 27. This negative 8 plus 7 here will simplify to give you negative 1, so we've got 2x minus 1 equals 27, and we can solve this by adding 1 to both sides, this is 2x equals 28, and then we divide both sides by 2, leaving us with x equals 14. Now in this question we've actually got two functions, one for f and one for g. Let's start off by solving g of x equals 0. So if g of x equals 0, we know what g of x is, it's x squared minus 25, so let's replace the g of x with x squared minus 25, and the right hand side is equal 0. You should recognise this as a quadratic equation to solve, and it's specifically the case of the difference of two squares. This means we can factorise it into two brackets, x plus 5 and x minus 5 equals 0. This will give you two solutions, so for the first bracket we've got x plus 5 equals 0, which gives you a solution of x equals negative 5, and the second bracket x minus 5 equals 0 gives you a solution of x equals 5. Now let's look at another equation. So this one's going to be a little more complicated, it's going to involve both functions. So we're going to solve g of x equals f of x. So we've been given both of those functions in the question, so we can just write g of x, which is x squared minus 25, equals f of x, which is 3x minus 15. So we just replace the functions in the equation with the functions we're given in the question. This is also a quadratic equation to solve. In order to solve this one we're going to need to get all of the terms on the same side and the other side equal to 0. So I'm going to get all of the terms on the left hand side and make the right hand side equal 0. To do this I'll need to subtract 3x from the right hand side but also plus 15. This will mean the right hand side equals 0, but on the left hand side if I subtract 3x and plus 15 I get x squared minus 3x and then I need to do this negative 25 plus 15 which is negative 10. Now this quadratic isn't a difference of two squares but it will factorise. If we look at the final term of negative 10 we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give this, but also add to give negative 3. This would be positive 2 and negative 5. So we end up with x plus 2, x minus 5 equals 0. This gives us two solutions again, so for the first bracket x plus 2 equals 0, which means x must be negative 2, and for the second bracket x minus 5 equals 0, which means x must be a positive 5. Now for one final question. 
This question involves the previous topics of composite functions and inverse functions, as well as functions and equations in the same question. So we're going to solve f g of x minus g inverse of x equals zero. So what we're going to do is focus on this composite function f g of x first. So we're just going to work out what that function is. To work out this function, we write the f function, which is x squared plus nine, but instead of an x, write a bracket. So instead of x squared plus nine, it's bracket squared plus nine. Then inside this bracket, we put the whole g function. So that's this x minus three over two. Now, if you have a bracket all squared like this with a fraction inside, you can just square the top of the fraction and square the bottom of the fraction. So if we square the top, it's x minus three all squared. And if we square the bottom, it's two squared. And then we've got this plus nine at the end. Now, x minus three squared on the top is actually the same bracket written twice. It's x minus three times x minus three. And on the bottom, we can do two squared. That's two times two, which is four. And then this plus nine at the end. So what we need to do is expand out the brackets on the top. Let's start with x times x, which is x squared, x times negative three, which is negative three x, negative three times x, which is also negative three x, and negative three times by itself, which is positive nine. These two terms in the middle will simplify, so negative three x subtract another negative three x gives you negative six x. This is all over four, and then we've still got this plus nine at the end. So this is what we get for the composite function fg of x. Now let's look at the second part of this equation here, g inverse of x. So we need to work out the inverse function for g. So to do this, we're going to write the g function out, but write y instead of g of x. So y equals x minus three over two. Then we swap the x's and y's around. So it's x equals y minus three over two. And then we're going to rearrange this to make y the subject. To do this, we'll multiply both sides by two. On the left hand side, that's 2x, and on the right hand side, that will cancel the 2, so it's just y minus 3. Then we can add 3 to both sides. On the left hand side, that's 2x plus 3, and on the right hand side, that will cancel the negative 3, leaving you with y. We can now replace the y with g inverse of x, and since we usually write the function bit on the left hand side, we'll just switch the order around. So this is your inverse function, g inverse of x, it's 2x plus 3. We're now ready to form this equation. So the equation says the composite function fg of x, which is this function here, subtract the whole of the inverse function, which is 2x plus 3 equals 0. So we just need to solve this equation here. I'm going to start by looking at this bracket at the end here. Since we've subtracted the whole of the inverse function, this negative will affect both of those terms. You could imagine it's a negative 1 in front of the bracket. So if we do negative 1 times 2x, that's negative 2x and negative one times positive three is negative three. So we can remove this bracket by putting negative two x, subtract three. Now I'm going to multiply through by four on both sides. If I multiply by four on the left hand side, every single term needs to be multiplied by four. Now for the fraction, that will cancel the four that's on the bottom, just leaving me with x squared minus six x plus nine. Then I need to multiply the nine by four, that's 36. Then the negative two x by four, that's negative eight x and the negative three by four, that's negative 12, and also the right-hand side by four, but zero times four is still zero. Now that we've got it all on one line, we need to collect up our like terms. So we've got an x squared. Then if we look at the terms in x, we've got negative six x subtract eight x, that's negative 14 x. And then if we look at the constant terms, we've got plus nine plus 36, that's 45. And then if you subtract 12 from that, you get 33. So plus 33 equals zero. Once again, we've been left with a quadratic to solve. This one also factorizes. If you look for numbers that multiply to make 33 that add to make negative 14, there aren't too many options to choose here. You actually want negative 11 and negative three, and this equals zero. This gives you two solutions. So for the first bracket, x minus 11 equals zero, in which case x must be positive 11, and the second bracket, x minus three equals zero, in which case x must be positive three. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and go and check out the exam questions in this video's description.